All right, so before we get started, I want to just give credit to the original artist that I'm kind of re heavily referencing here. Uh, Outrun Youth, I believe, is the original artist. Um, this is the collection I saw on Instagram that kind of inspired me to do this particular uh, render. Um, they're all really interesting. I think I want to recreate probably this one, maybe something like that. And one of these, probably. Um, and this one. I think those are my favorites. Um, but this one is the one I um, recreated first. Um, definitely kind of did a little bit of my own thing with it, but kept the basic premise. I just kind of dealt with the smoke and the lighting a little bit differently. But um, I think it was pretty similar. So this is my final rendered version. Um, Everything's super um, pretty low poly, or except for the shrubbery, you know, is a little more high poly. But that's hand scattered. Um, the smoke and the sparks are all simulated in Blender, and then just basic atmospheric fog, spotlight, some lights down to create the red light there. Um, I don't think it's supposed to be fire, but I think the red sparks really lend a hand to it. I'm not really sure. <clears throat> um, what it meant to the original artist, but to me it's kind of like you know, a portal to hell kind of thing. Um, yeah, you know, a little bit of hell leaking into our world type thing. But yeah, I just want to do a scene breakdown for this. It's going to be just super quick, like overview, but just to show you how simplistic your scenes can be. They don't have to be so complicated all the time. Everything here is really simple. Alright, so first with the main scene, so everything you see here was modeled in like, I don't know, 20 minutes probably. Um, all of these like concentric evenly sized circles um, are just Bezier circles with a solidify modifier and a bevel modifier. Also you have to add a little bit of extrusion I think uh, to give it the thickness and then you give it the solidify to make it come up like this. Um, took I don't know, 10-15 minutes to figure out that that's how I wanted to do it. And then um, the shrubbery, uh, I have it hidden because it slows down the viewport. But this is hand scattered with the built-in um, G scatter. Or no, it's not G scatter. It's um, it's scatter objects. G scatter is really cool, but I don't think it works with the newest version of Blender yet. Um, but I, was, I use scatter objects, um, so all you have to do is select the object you want to scatter, and then shift select the object you want to scatter on, F3, uh, to search scatter objects, and then you can just draw where you want it to scatter. You can come up here to the tool options, and you can change like the density, um, you know, the radius, all kinds of stuff. And then you just hit enter, and it scattered those objects, um, and it creates a new collection for each time you scatter um, so I can scatter in layers and then I can hide and show in layers which I think is um, a little bit tedious but honestly I really like it there are a few things that I did in their own scenes like the smoke sim and the character um, I was going to talk about the character for a second um, I just created this guy really quickly um, using a skin modifier so you just essentially build what the shape of this rig is out in vertice points. So you just create a single point vertice, extrude it out into this shape, and then you can scale the vert each vertice uh, in edit mode to give it the thickness that you want for each body part. The cape was super simple. It's just um, just a circle. So it's uh, a circle like this. Um, like I scaled it down, I just extrude, extrude scale and then it's like shift R to repeat and that's how I got the shape of the cape and then just do a cloth sim um, that was really easy and then uh, because I'm bringing it into a new scene um, in this scene um, I have the gravity set to negative something um, because of the smoke and spark simulations I want them to slowly rise I have the gravity set to negative and that wouldn't work with a cloth sim obviously because um, then the cape just slowly floats up. 
uh, or the kind of poncho thing. I'm not actually sure what you'd call it. Um, but I'm sure there's a way to get around that. But the easiest way was to just um, convert this to an object or apply the cloth modifier or something like that. Um, and then it's just baked in, which it does make it a little bit boring in the animation <laughs> that the cape's just stationary. But um, I haven't figured out how to fix that. Um, and then the hat is honestly, <laughs> it, it it's so simple, it's not even funny. The hat is literally um, a super low polygon thing. I literally took a plane, inset the faces, extrude those faces up just to get this little up part, create two loop cuts, bring these two down, and then bring in each of the corners a little bit to make each section a circle and then do the same here. And then add a um, subdivision surface and you get just like this cute little hat. Um, so all this stuff is literally as simple as it can possibly be. You know, the character doesn't need to be able, doesn't need to, be able to do anything. You know, because um, he doesn't need to look cool because he's just going to be covered up by a cape. And then, you know, the hat just needs to have a basic hat shape because, you know, in the final render, um, you know, he's, he's pretty small down there. Um, he's, he's Proportionally, he's bigger than he is in the original render, but I kind of like the scale for this scene. I kind of like how he's silhouetted against the... Um, against the spark and the fire. You know, I really like how his silhouette kind of stands out there. Really, the only other things in this scene are the smoke sim, um, to give the smoke kind of rising out of the, um, the pit. Uh, the only other thing is the volumetric cube for this whole scene. Um, this one, which I could set to bounds and I'll have it only show the corners, but I don't need it in the scene right now. Yeah, and then the the sparks add a lot, but yeah, everything in this scene was done with no third-party add-ons, only the add-ons that are native to Blender. Um, everything was hand-modeled or simulated in Blender. Uh, people really sleep on Blender's smoke simulations, but honestly, if you just take a little bit of time to try and figure out how it works, it works really well, you know, you just gotta kind of learn how to control it and get it to do what you want, but it's it's really not that bad. Alrighty guys, thank you for watching. See y'all next time.